Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to this funniest WWE action figure video. I am so excited for this. I honestly thought I had made this video, uh, but I went back through the history of the channel and I can't find it. So I think I'm kind of losing my mind a little bit here because uh, I really thought we had made this. Uh, this is a video that I have wanted to make for a while slash thought I had already made um, and I'm really excited to go through because we're going to talk about uh, who I think is the funniest WWE superstar of all time. We're going to talk about what I think is the funniest moment in wrestling or certainly moment that's had a figure made of it. Uh, I think the funniest moment in wrestling might be the Titus World Slide uh, but there was no figure of that. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about a different moment that has had a figure made. Uh, we're going to talk about the funniest superstar today. We're going to talk about uh, the funniest segment ever. Uh, there's so much to go through. Uh, let's not wait around. Let's talk about a moment that was so iconic that it was the first epic moment set. I am, of course, talking about the Festival of Friendship. This was Chris Jericho's way of showing Kevin Owens just how important he was, just how much he valued their friendship. Uh, this was a segment from early 2017. Um, he had a little sculpture uh, that showed seemingly two entities entwined. Uh, he had a picture called The Creation of Kevin, uh, and Kevin Owens' reaction was priceless. All throughout this whole thing, there was dancing girls and Jericho in a sparkly suit as well. Uh, it's an absolutely fantastic segment. Um, and as we said, Mattel loved it so much, they made it the first epic moment set. You can actually get that for a really good price as well at the moment. Uh, next up, we've got Blue Tista. This is probably the funniest Twitter moment, if you will, the Twitter reaction. So this was absolutely incredible. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Batista in 2014 uh, at Payback came out in like blue trunks, blue arm sleeves. Um, and so Twitter saw that immediately and called him Blue Tista. Uh, it was the number one trend in the world. <laughs> blue Tista. Uh, and he hates it as well. He absolutely hates it. So, of course, Mattel made a figure, uh, so you can get a Blue Tista Batista figure uh, based on that match, based on that moment. Uh, it is the funniest reaction on Twitter uh, I've ever seen, and as we said, it was trending at number one. Next up, this is a really underrated moment from a couple of years ago. It's Miz and Maurice dressed up as John Cena and Nikki Bella. Uh, this was all building towards their WrestleMania match. And it was all around, like, the relationship of Nikki and John Cena. Uh, which, sadly, of course, is no more. Um, but at the time, there was a lot of rumours and speculation about were they going to get engaged eventually. Uh, of course, they would get engaged at the end of that match at WrestleMania. Um, but, yeah, in the build-up, Miz and Maurice dressed up as Nikki Bella and John Cena... Uh, and really, really ripped into them. There's some fantastic stuff here. This is not spoken about enough. It's really underrated. Next up, this isn't out yet, but this for me has been the funniest superstar of the year. Uh, I can't imagine 2019 without this guy. Our uh, truth, our truth, and the 24 7 championship. Uh, we've seen him losing it on uh, runways and at golf courses, uh, defending this title absolutely everywhere. Uh, obviously, he's been going around calling it the 28-8 European Championship, TV Championship, and all of this. Uh, R-Truth gets confused on a regular basis, and that's where a lot of his humour comes from. Um, but yeah, just seeing him like uh, sneaking in to people's weddings, uh, actually taking the title off Drake Maverick at his wedding... Uh, there's been some fantastic moments this year. So uh, that figure, not out yet. You can't get it yet. I think it drops in 2020. Will come with the 27-4-11 uh, European Championship. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a great looking figure. Next up, these guys don't get the credit they deserve either. Bree Zango. Bree Zango for me has been the funniest act over recent years. Loved the fashion files. Uh, the little backstage things that they did. Uh, loved the fact they were going around giving out uh, fashion violation slips. Just backstage to anyone that was an uggo. They were going up to them and giving them fashion violations. Um, so really do enjoy the work of these two. Um, I think putting them together has been a genius move. They're down in NXT or over in NXT, I should say. Um, and hopefully they get used well and they get highlighted because they're both fantastic wrestlers uh, and I'd love to see them get in some more of those like fashion file vignettes uh, I just think they were criminally underrated um, so yeah them dressed as fashion police you can get Mattel packs of that uh, battle packs I think it's battle pack 54 uh, you could get a couple of elites as well Next on the list, we're going to take a look at who I think is the funniest superstar of all time, Santino Morella. Every single segment he was in, I personally found hilarious. Uh, just the way he would walk and the way that he would talk, his matches, his backstage interviews, everything about this guy was just so focused on entertaining. Um, it's, it's really hard to stand here and say what made him funny. Because it was his interactions uh, and some of the witty one-liners that he would come out with. Um, and uh, obviously he was trying to become the longest reigning intercontinental champion. He had things like the honker meter uh, where he would compare his reign to like Honky Tonk Man's reign. Uh, and of course he fell fantastically short. Um, but you can get lots of Santino Morella figures. Uh, you can get some elites that come with like the Cobra. Uh, which of course was his version of Mr. Socko. Uh, and then also you can get a battle pack with him and Beth Phoenix, Glamorella, uh, who had some great moments as well. So uh, for my money, Santino Morella, the funniest WWE superstar of all time. But more recently, you would have to talk about these guys, the New Day. Uh, of course, uh, the way that they carry themselves as well. Some of the funny skits that they've done uh, hosting WrestleMania. Uh, and just the way that Big E acts as well and the gyrating and throwing pancakes out into the crowd. Uh, plus, like, how loud their ring attire has become over the years. Uh, the way that they interact with other superstars, kind of, like, quickly shooting them down with little ad-libs and things. Um, you can get loads of great uh, New Day figures. Uh, the one that I would recommend would be the Bootios pack because you get all three members. You get some fun accessories. It's in a Bootios box as well. Uh, it's kind of everything you need for the New Day. Next up, I really wanted to include this because it had some really funny moments to the match. But I wanted to include it because the match was brilliant. This is the Wii LC pack. This is Hornswoggle. El Torito, I mean, Hornswoggle was just a fantastic superstar. Uh, you can uh, get figures of him when he's with uh, Finley, for example. Uh, you can get figures of him when he's in with DX. Uh, and both of those provided fantastic moments, plenty of comedy moments. Uh, but this Wii LC match, uh, it had like little people commentating uh, and little people doing like referees jobs and um, that's kind of where a lot of the humor came from was the fact that everything was scaled down like the ladders they were using were tiny the tables that they used were tiny uh, everything was much much smaller um, and it was a, just a bit of fun on like the pre-show but the match itself was actually really really good and I know this is something that Hornswoggle has spoken about being very very proud about and he absolutely should so um this was a fun match and uh, you can get a battle pack of it and you can even get little table and little chair in with the battle pack uh, and obviously both of the superstars um but you should definitely watch this and appreciate just how great of a match it was as well next up then we've got the funniest moment ever uh, I said earlier that for me it's Titus O'Neil falling over at the Greatest Royal Rumble. Uh, there is no figure of that moment. It's, I think you can just get a pretty standard Titus figure. It's, you don't really need anything special. Um, but it's got to be this. This Shockmaster moment. 1993. Shockmaster making his debut. Fell over. His helmet comes off. 
It's it's just like the worst debut in the history of debuts, like falling over on your debut. Um, and of course, the character was done then. No one could take him seriously after that. Um, and so they went in a different direction. But Mattel released the Shockmaster figure. This was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive for 2016. Um, great figure. Um, a great moment. And uh, an absolute must for uh, any Mattel collection. That brings us to the final figure, though. And this is regarded as the greatest WWE segment. The funniest segment of all time. Uh, it's often quoted at top of lists, and it is, this is your life, The Rock. Uh, so what we've got here is the defining moments of The Rock from that segment. Um, and basically, uh, the uh, Rock and Sock connection were starting to have a bit of trouble. They were starting to break apart because the night before, Mankind had uh, mandible clawed. The Rock, so he wanted to apologise, and he did that by giving him a This Is Your Life segment. It was full of balloons, uh, full of surprises. We had The Rock's old girlfriend come down. We had The Rock's old coach come down. There was even uh, a clown that was in there as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, The Rock obviously responding to all of this in typical Rock fashion. The crowd hanging on every single word. But for me, the funniest moment was completely unintentional. Triple H comes down at the very, very end to break this thing apart and actually gets caught in a load of balloons. Like he was angrily stumping away on them. But you could see at the end, he was like properly tangled up in them. <laughs> so that for me has always been uh, my favourite moment of this whole segment. Um, but the fact that you can get the rock from that segment, I think speaks volumes. The fact that Mattel refer to it as a defining moment, uh, again, I think speaks volumes. So if you haven't seen that, go back uh, to Raw 1999. Uh, I can tell you that it took place on the 27th of September uh, and uh, you won't be disappointed. Awesome, guys. That We could have gone through loads more. We could have spoke about Doink the Clown and loads of different things. Uh, but I wanted to give you uh, what I thought were the best moments of all time, my favourite uh, superstars, funniest superstars of all time, the funniest superstars in recent times. Um, and so we kind of approached it that way. But uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, hit the subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.